is Joseph Porter. I'm an instructor with Ride or Die Gun Training LLC, and I've been doing this roughly now for eight years as an instructor, and I've been uh, shooting firearms extensively since 2004 and training a lot since 2004. You know, going through the house, and this is my gun hand. So that's why you keep this hand free. If you're lefty, then the opposite. You keep your right hand free. Just, you know, try to assault me for whatever reason in a wrong neighborhood, wrong time. Right. So I've had these pointed to my face. I've stuck them to people, you know, mm -hmm. shoot, shootouts, people shoot, don't don't hit anything. Because okay. they don't know how to hold the gun correctly. Right. Or, you know, like the dude that racked the slide slow and, and left the gun out of battery and tried to shoot me when it jammed on him. So handguns, I, I've been through the, the ugly side of, of handguns up close personal. Right. I've been robbed in real life. Yeah. <laughs> and then on top of that, I've had people try to rob me after that, but I was ready for them. I had to drop on them because I knew the next time, watch for hands. I was like, oh, that's why police always say, show me your hands. I didn't understand that until after I got robbed. I was like, oh, damn, that's why they always say, show me your hands. If I can't see hands, that's yellow flag. Especially if someone you know looks suspicious. If he masking up like future, he just pops a molly or something like that, then, and his hands go here, that's yellow flag. He may not be coming to harm me, or he may be coming to harm me. That just lets me know that you know I need to be alert. Be ready. It might pop off. If he pulls his hands back out, we're cool. But if he comes out with this, then you know, he's not cool. <laughs> but it's one of those things, it's, it's different uh, things that you can learn from different instructors. Gotcha. Just make sure you go to a quality instructor. Because mm -hmm. all instructors are not created equal. I learned that too. Some guys are certified as instructor, suck. Mm -hmm. I'm all about, you know, good instructors. If there's a good instructor, don't get caught up on, oh, this is the one person that I learned from. I take the, the uh, Bruce Lee approach. You know, take what's useful and disregard what's not. Yeah. There's a lot of useful information with a lot of different instructors. Right. So if they're good instructors, train with them. Right. Like I said, you'll learn different aspects. Right. It's the same thing that I've been doing. I've trained with many, many instructors. I don't go to just one person and say that, oh, they are the know-it-all, they are the grandmaster, and I don't need to learn from anyone else, no. Different aspects. I take what works for me and disregard what does not work for me. Get off the X is one of the most common drills that you'll learn in any uh, defensive CCW course or tactical course. It's one of the first drills that you go over outside of, you know, drawing from your holster safely and then making hits. Getting off the X is similar to what you were doing, just moving me out of the way. You were getting me off the X. Off the X, means basically getting off the line of fire. So instead of you moving me this time, you'll still move me, but you're gonna sidestep, literally, that's it. The reason why, like I said, you're getting off the X is you're sidestepping, you're getting out of the line of fire. So you got this dude down here that's about to fire at you. He's drawing his gun or whatever, or he's in the motion of drawing his gun, and you're drawing simultaneously. And then I get the same thing when I train, you get a lot of guys that like a uh, military, it's a different world because they're engaging people at, at longer range. Sometimes they may have cover to go running behind. And you know, in the civilian world, I may not have cover. If I have cover, obviously get to cover. But in the situations that I've been in, there was no cover. It was just me out here at this distance. And then someone drew them. There's nowhere to run. You know, I'm down the way, I'm over the run, I'm Walnut Hills or whatever. There is no cover. There's no car to run and go hide behind, no tree. We're at arm's length distance. He drew, I drew, I beat him to the draw. There's nowhere to run to, that's it. If his boy comes out, there's still nowhere to run to. So you gotta get used to shooting and moving. Well, at least with one person, like I said, getting used to getting off the edge, that's the first step. If he's here, he's drawn, I'm just here. Just, just that quick side step. I don't need to run or anything, I just need to, it's just quick. If I gotta move again, then we'll get to that. But right now, I just wanna get you used to getting here. If I'm coming, I'm coming out on you. I got my finger on the trigger, I'm a thug. You know, I'm a, I'm one of us, that's a thug, or I'm some, you know, white supremacist or something like that. I'm Helen Hitler or whatever, and I'm, I'm drawing on you. I'm, 
I want, I'm a bad guy. Terrorist, whatever. There's a lot of bad guys, a lot of racists. But I'm a bad guy, so I'm drawing. I just want you to get used to, you know, getting off the X. So I'm coming out. You move. Same thing. I'm, I'm coming out. You move. So I'm, I'm coming out. Yeah, you. Right there. That right there is life or death. Because yeah. a lot of times, like I said, he's going to. That just changes. That changes his focus. His focus was right in front of him. You just stepped to the right, so now my focus just changed. So the scenario that we were going over, my back is to the threat. I have no idea that there's a threat behind us that's about to, you know, get us in an armed robbery or whatever. My friend that is facing the threat sees the threat. I do not see the threat. So while the threat is drawing their firearm, my friend is getting me out of the line of fire. At the same time, they're getting themselves out of the line of fire. And then they're going ahead and stopping the threat immediately. Because in real life, you may not have a clean shot. You may have people in the way that don't allow you to make the clean shot. So one of two things is going to happen. You're going to have to either move that person out of the, the line of uh, fire, or you're going to have to move yourself into a clean shot. But what we're doing now is we're doing both of them. Remember to keep focus on that front sight. Right now, I feel like the laws in place are good. Uh, you know, background checks, every time you buy a firearm from a store, they automatically run a background check anyway. So, I mean, that's a good law to have. The, the issue, a big issue with gun violence, people act like uh, the system's not working. I mean, the system isn't working to an extent, but a, a big way guns get on the streets are what is called straw purchases which are already, you know, uh, federal felonies. They're illegal. So you have a person that qualifies to purchase a firearm. They'll go to the store and then buy it for a criminal that can't pass the background check. And that's how a lot of firearms get onto the, you know, black market or get into the streets. It's not they're going and people say, you know, internet loophole. There is no loophole in the internet. You can't have a firearm shipped directly to your house unless you're an FFL. And then you get it shipped to the FFL, they, by federal law, have to run a background check on you. Or Ohio law, they have to verify that you have a CCW permit. Mm -hmm. So one of the two things that happen. So both ways, they know that you're legal. But you know, big issue is people buying guns for criminals that can't pass background checks. So the way that I, uh, you know, stay extra safe, this is not required by law, but what I always do is if I'm, you know, tired of this gun for some reason, I've owned it for two years, and I say, I don't want this gun anymore. If I sell it to someone, a private seller, I don't have to run a background check, right. person to person. Right. But what I always do, I only, if I sell my gun to someone, I only sell my gun to someone that has a CCW license or a law enforcement uh, ID. Mm -hmm. I don't sell, if you don't have a CCW license or a law enforcement ID and a badge, I'm not selling to you, period. So, so I require that during every transaction. So let's say if I wanted to sell my gun, I don't have, like all I can do is just find someone to buy it and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no rules stopping anything. Person to person. Person to person. Yeah, yeah, you just, you yeah. just put it on the, because they, uh, they got a website that's called, uh, what is it? Arms uh, List. Arms List. Yeah. And that's person to person. That's your personal information on this site. You put it on their picture, tell them the information, what's the cost. They get in contact with you. You meet up with them, hand to hand sale. You bring the money, they got the weapon, you leave. That's it. This dude has stepped in your face, and he's about to try to go for your gun, or he's immediately drawing his gun. So this is up close. So what you're going to do is, well, I'll put this aside for now. You're going to draw, and then you're going to double tap. You're going to shoot off the hip. So you're going to draw, get off the X. You got me up out the way. I'm slipping. I'm zoning out. I said my B headphones are in right now, all the way up. I can't hear nothing, can't see nothing. I'm tunnel vision this way. You see the bad guy behind me. So you moving me out the way, at least puts me in the right direction. So if I do run, I'm right running this way. way. Yeah. Cause you had those super friends like, what's going on, man? <laughs> pop, 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 pop. 
Just keep running. Yeah, Don't you have stop. friends like that. I have friends like that. Family members like that. And they have no idea what's going no, on. No, no. Tap rack. Tap rack. You got oh. malfunction. Oh, damn. Yep. 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 Got you got a double feed. Yep. <laughs> Malfunctions are good, at least you learn now how much stress your gun can take. Hopefully you don't get into a gunfight in the mud, but if you do, now you understand, you know, how your gun performs with mud on it. Yeah, now I know. I'm your mother. What? Except I got facial hair. <laughs> Safety is adding on the second. Yeah. So you gotta decide whether or not you want to have the safety on or not. Okay. Because that safety could be your life. Yeah. Just like not having a round in the chamber. You know, that's another second, second and a half. Now you got a manual safety, that's another second or second and a half. So you done added two, three seconds onto when you getting your first shot off. So you gotta think about, you know, will I have an extra two, three seconds? Yeah. See, the thing about open carry. There's advantages and disadvantages to it. The one advantage that you have with open carry is the faster draw. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to move anything out the way. Your jacket's already out the way, your gun is exposed. So I'm, I'm open carry. There's nothing for my gun to get hooked on. Like you saw my gun get hooked on my drawstring. Mm -hmm. This is my first time shooting and training inside of this coat. Mm -hmm. So I learned something today. If I ever wear this coat, you know, in the gunfight, it might get hooked on the drawstring. I got caught on my drawstring again. So that slowed down my follow up shot. But it's real life. Now I know that this coat is not a good coat from a tactical advantage. But the only way you learn that is by doing. So with open carry, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting snagged on different things. So you get that faster draw. Mm -hmm. You might shave a second off your draw time because it takes me about a second to you know, get my uh, gun out from concealment, from up under my shirt, under my jacket, then get on target and make a hit. Mm -hmm. So you know, I might shave a second off open carrying. Right. But the biggest, you know, that's the one advantage to open carry. There's so many other disadvantages. You know, disadvantages. I'm walking around and they see my gun outside. Exactly. I basically have a target on my back. Right. So I'm basically giving a warning to any bad guy that wants to do harm. I'm the, the you know good guy with a gun. If they do, mo sometimes criminals will see a gun exposed, and that'll be a deterrent. They'll look, oh, I'm gonna go for an easier target. Mm -hmm. This guy or this woman is armed. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take the chance of getting shot. All right. Open carry does not require a CCW license. Right. Open carry is legal in the state of Ohio as long as you can legally own a firearm. Yes, so if you have a clean record, you can open carry without a CCW. Okay. All you need to have is your driver's license, and like I said, a clean record. You can open carry okay. without a CCW license. Oh, okay. So if you have a CCW, you can't open carry. No, you can do both. Oh, you can do have both? a CCW. Oh, okay. okay. Right. So that's the benefit to having a CCW. Because some people that just want to open carry, mm -hmm. for me, you're setting yourself up if you just open that's carry without a CCW. That's what, I mean. what if you're out? You're open carrying. You don't have a CCW license. Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, the slightest thing happens and your gun gets concealed mm -hmm. accidentally. If you run into a cop on a bad day and you know he, you know, size you up, stops you for whatever reason, and then you tell him, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm open carrying or whatever, and they get you for concealed carry, you don't have a license. You go, like, oh, my coat accidentally covered it up. Mm -hmm. But right here, it's covered. You know, nevertheless, it, it's covered. So it just depends on the officer. The officer may say, you know, I understand accidents happen. I'm not going to get you with that. Or you might run into the officer that is not so cool that says, you know what? No, you're carrying a concealed weapon. Mm -hmm. You know, show me your hands. And they start reading you your Miranda rights. Mm -hmm. It's better just have a CCW. Right. Just in case my jacket or sweater accidentally covers my open carry gun up. I'm still good. Open and carry. Yeah, because, you, you know, you can be open carrying with a T-shirt, wind blow, and it covers your gun up. And like I said, if you run into the wrong officer on the wrong day, 
that is carrying a concealed weapon. You're going to be out on Justice Center windows looking like so hard. They don't even know you got it on you. There was a uh, guy, I think it was in uh, Kroger's. There was an older man open carrying. License, had a CCW, everything. Open carrying in Kroger's. And it was a brother, too. Older black man. Mm -hmm. Open carrying in Kroger's, you know, buying food or whatever. White guy sees him, says that he thinks he's a threat. And while the dude's not paying any attention, he tackles the open carrier. Like, literally tackles him. Subdues him, holds him down, and screams for everyone and, you know, call the police or whatever. Cops come out, and they're like, why in the hell do you, you know, assault this, this gentleman? First of all, the guy's open carrying, which is legal in the state of Ohio. Kroger's does not have a sign up telling you that you can't open carry. Right. And then on top of that, the guy had a CCW license. So he's totally legit. And he's not grabbing his firearm. Or, the dude's in there buying groceries. He's not a threat to anyone. Now, the dude got, he slammed him and subdued him. Now, the, you're saying the white guy slammed yes. the black guy. Okay. Yes. Now, was the white guy open carry when he came in Kroger's? No. He was carrying concealed. He wasn't carrying at all. Period. He was unarmed. <laughs> so he just jumped on the dude? Right, that's the same thing to happen. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> he just got slammed. That's crazy. But that's where weapon retention comes in and everything. Like I said, most of the guys that I see open carrying have no training open carrying. They don't know weapon retention. They have no hand-to-hand -hand skills. So they can't, basically, they can't fight. Got it. So <laughs> you couple those together, and you get the guy that out there, like I said, that is not set up your open mm -hmm. carry gun. And they challenge you, that happens. He easily got taken down. Right. So he ain't get no punch off, no nothing. He just got dumped <laughs> in the middle of Kroger's, you know, frozen food section, dumped. So you got that situation where you know you try to go for it, and I go for your, your gun. But see, you already put your hand up. The yeah. typical person is not like that. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't know what's there. there. You don't know but, what's but there. But yeah, and then you can. You, you hit him with this. Right. So you throw that quick punch. Right. Just quick. Just right here. You Yeah, just. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I just want you to get used to that because you might be here. Yeah. So at this point, you can't get your gun out. Right. You can just stop him from going. So you just, this right here just creates space. Okay. You're not going for the knockout punch. Right. You just drop if you drop him, good. But if you don't, this just creates distance. Right. All you want is distance. Right, right. Distance so that you can get a smooth draw. Right. If I'm up on you right here, we wrestling for the gun. That's why, so, yeah, you, right. now you can get it out. Yeah, gotcha. Or you, same thing, elbow, just right. quick elbow. So we right here, I'm trying to get your gun. Yeah, just throw that elbow, throw that elbow from right there. Yeah, gotcha. I'm, I'm back. Gotcha. Like I said, it ain't necessarily to, to knock me out. Right. You just want to get that gun out. Because he might be up on you. And when you turn, you did a good job giving him this shoulder. Well, the opposite, you want to go this way. Okay. So if I'm coming here, just getting that shoulder, it makes me have to reach around. Right, right, right. So you don't want to give me easy access. So if I'm reaching over here, yeah, just give me that shoulder, yeah. Gotcha. And you can come with that 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 hook. Just, yeah, just that elbow. It could be a knee. It could be a knee. Gotcha. But th throw the knee that's closest to you. Gotcha. So if I'm right here, yeah. You right here, just, yeah, you, you get him back. back. And I'm open carrying. I'm immediately going shoulder right here. So if you walking up to me, say, so walk up to me. If you here, I'm literally, I'm, I'm right here. Right here. Open carry. I'm not giving you this side. I'm giving you this side. So try to reach for my gun. I'm, I'm here. So he has to reach around me. And I can come here and just knee him in the nuts. I just need a little space. But I'm not going to stand right here. I'm giving him this. So if he's still coming around trying to reach for my gun, I'm, I'm here. He's the bigger man, but he can't get around. Your arms are long, but they're not that long. So you just trying to go for my gun. I'm just here. If he's here, I am just need a little space. So I can just go ahead and come with a knee or elbow or whatever. If I get enough space, then we're going to do the next step is shooting off the hip. So that's a different way of position to hold your gun up close. So you'd shoot from, from here. So you say you're going for my gun. I'm here. I'm boom. And I just pop, 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 pop. Right here off the hip. Yeah, I'm right here. Pop, pop. So even if I'm not striking, I'm here. So you can, yeah, you can't get in there. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to have your, your gun side exposed. So you, you squaring up. Just like boxing. So, you know, I'm right handed, so I'm going to carry on my right side. And I'm going to stand in orthodox position, which is left foot front. If you're southpaw, right foot front. Because you're going to have to go to left side. Go ahead and put this in your pocket. <laughs> and you're a lefty. So 
I'm trying to get to your left, so you gonna give me this side. Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to get over on it. But okay. yeah, you yeah, gonna, well, you gonna... I'm about to pick my head up. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's good. Okay. <laughs> so I'm here, but I'm trying to get to it. Yeah, you keep me out. You can even fully extend your arm to keep me out. So I'm here trying to get it. And then you, you, yeah, right there. Yeah, if you gotta fully extend your arm and not strike, works just as good. We share news clippings from all around the country dealing with uh, different firearms incidents. And that's definitely one of them. Yeah, dude got some dude in a grocery store. I think I was pretty sure it was Kroger's. So what happened to the guy that tackled They charged him. Okay. Yeah, when they, when they checked and saw that the guy was not breaking any laws, they charged that guy with assault or something like that. Okay. So yeah. He even should have got an assault charge because... Something. Yeah. That's but you, you have people like that. And that's why I tell people if you open carrying, you have an X on your back. And then the flip side to it, you know, you have bad guys. Like I said, that bad guy is not scared. And he's decided that, you know, I'm going to rob Kroger's period today. Today is robbery day. He, you know, about to mask up or whatever. And you the open carrying dude not paying no attention. You all over here. Like, <laughs> boom. This is the average open carrier that I see. They have no training open carrying. Now, my thing is, if you in Kroger's or any store and it's getting robbed, is that the same as you getting threatened with your life because you in the oh, store yeah, getting robbed? Yeah. So you can protect yourself in them, yeah. in them, in that store mm -hmm. against that robber. Yeah, you can protect innocent life. Okay. You have the right to, you know, protect innocent life. So it's not just, you know, defending yourself. You, you can't defend someone else. Okay. Okay. So if it's robbery or whatever... The, the crazy part about it, politically, they'll probably ban you from that store for saving everybody. Okay. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we don't want firearms in our store. You saved the, the patrons from an armed robbery, and now we want to ban you from the store. They do that like restaurants and stuff. Oh, we don't want firearms in here. Even though you stopped an armed robbery. All right. So nobody getting hurt. Yeah, nobody no getting one robbed. was hurt. Nobody getting robbed. You got right. the bad guy. Right. And they want to ban you from the restaurant. You were legally carrying. Exactly. But they want to ban you from the restaurant. So I'm like... I'll take that loss. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool. I'll go somewhere else you. From a tactical standpoint, it's stupid. First of all, you got a rifle on your back. How does that help you? If something does happen, and they run in and rob it... How you gonna get it? Yeah, it's on your back. Right. Most of the time, they don't even have a magazine in it. <laughs> that open carry rifle on my back? For what? If it's not, if you're not carrying for protection, then why are you carrying it? Yeah, it's like a guy downtown with on the square. That's right. Right. People will take your gun, though, man. I, I tell people that all the time. Like, man, don't get it twisted. You think that you're open carrying and everyone's going to be scared of it and everyone's going to go the opposite direction? Yeah, no. You're not paying attention. You, you walk yeah. in, you know what I'm saying, somebody come out of it, they just put yeah. it right out of your house. 90% of the people will go the opposite direction. Right. But you might have that 10% of bad guys. These are like super bad guys. They ain't scared. They just walk over yeah. here. They done sized you up. They see that you're not paying no attention. Mm -hmm. You're all the way over here looking. This is a typical open carrier. Mm -hmm. They here, and you got people just walking by. They, they're not paying any attention, or they sitting in Chipotle and haven't turned around not once. And you know, dude right behind him, and just you you take it from right behind him. Right. Nothing. There was a guy that got dunked in Detroit for his gun, open carrying in the gas station. He's in the hood on like eight mile road or nine mile road, open carrying, little dude. Standing in line in the gas station, nobody else is in there. Some dude came in there, looking around. It's just them and then the clerk. Dude, the guy behind him took one step back, and then he stepped forward, like right up on his back. I'm like, dang, is this your girlfriend or something? Like, mm -hmm. he was awfully close. The dude open carrying did not turn around not once. He had no situational awareness. He was not paying any attention to his surroundings. Mm -hmm. He didn't see this guy literally up on his back like this in the gas station. I can feel it when someone gets close to me. Right. Unless you my girl, like, back up. You know like, for real. Right. But nothing. He's here. Dude stood, stepped back, and he just picked this guy up and dunked him. Right in the gas station in Detroit. Slammed the, I mean, he slammed quarters out of him. Damn. Slammed him right on his chest. Went right on the ground. He's on the ground. Took his gun out of his holster and then walked out the gas station oh, with wow. dude's gun. He didn't even have a gun. He took his gun while he was on the ground. And you see, like, ten seconds later, this dude finally catches, you know, wakes back up. Like I said, he slammed change out of the dude. He gets back up, trying to figure out, like, oh, he's looking for the guy that took his gun. Like, that dude's gone. gone. And he has your gun, so what you gonna do? Go up to a criminal and ask, please give me my gun back. 